वेलकम टू एवरीबॉडी नाउ इट इज मेडिका कार्डियो टॉक फोर्टीन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू शेयर आवर व्यूज रिगार्डिंग न्यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एल ए एपेंडिज क्लोजर इन एट्रियल प्रिपरेशन एज वेल एज सम न्यूअर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर we know that atrial fibrillation is a condition where the heart beat is irregular and it could cause catastrophic complications like cerebrovascular accident or stroke and uh, there are various ways to prevent such complication like stroke by drug therapy like anticoagulants newer oral anticoagulants called noax or even some situations left atrial appendage closure because we know that left atrial appendage is a site where maximum thrombus is located from where the thrombus can dislodge and can cause this catastrophe so today we are going to understand that is there any data which can compare the left atrial appendage closure in atrial fibrillation versus the newer anticoagulant therapy or noac in atrial fibrillation with me dr dilip kumar my colleague consultant interventional cardiologist is going to share his views and we would like to share our comments regarding this new technology uh, dr uh, dilip what is your idea about this left atrial appendage closure versus the newer oral anticoagulant therapy natural fibrillation thank you sir and uh, hello everyone this is uh, this field is getting very interesting as we have got multiple options uh, nowadays so we had uh, warfarin earlier uh, which we used to give for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation then came noax and then we have a left atrial appendage occluder devices which are really really life saving and uh, in certain situations where there is a high bleeding risk and patient is bleeding and there was a criticism of late uh, that la appendage occluder devices have not been compared against noax so we had initial studies like protect af and prevail Uh, the devices like watchman and uh, amplifier devices uh, but do you have any data to suggest that there is a clear comparison between left atrial appendage closure by a device versus newer anticoagulant therapy or noac right sir so we have a new trial published like prag 17 uh, which came in the uh, fag end of last year so it's a quite a new trial and we have multiple trials trials ongoing uh, on the subject and this trial has given us good you know insights and this trial also has shown that left atrial occluder devices were non inferior to noax even so if we give noax and if we give uh, left atrial appendage occluder devices to a patient who has a more than maybe 2.5 to 3 uh, chats fast score sure so these patients they do well they, they, right they so although they, although from the data of prag trial we may feel that there is no difference between left atrial, atrial appendage device closure versus the drug therapy with the newer anticoagulant called noac but we do not recommend this device closure in all patients of atrial fibrillation do we we do not no sir right so, very so right, sir. which patient you will select and why so as per the uh, kind of uh, guidelines we don't have a the recommendation that we can go with la appendage devices most of the cases but definitely there is a subset of patients like patients who are bleeding on noax or warfarin the patients who had a ckd where we can't give a noax and against warfarin we have seen that this is superior so this group of patients definitely lac is uh, more preferred but on the whole the, there is a case is being made uh, is is under making maybe uh, we can say that in future we may see that left atrial appendage occluder devices can outsmart and outcompete noax because noax is a life long therapy should sure. be a economical burden to the patient it's Agreed. not a you know cheap drug Agreed. so someone who is in 60s and 65 in the, uh, you know uh, 50s and 60s with atrial fibrillation so if he lives till 85 or 90 years so how many years he is going to take the noax and what will the economical burden and in between patient can bleed also agreed so one time therapy so it may out compete uh, in trials which i feel right so with the new data coming up in prag trial we can actually come to a conclusion that in certain subset of patients of atrial fibrillation left atrial appendage device closure is recommended more so we know that in chronic renal failure chronic kidney disease patient uh, there are higher chance of atrial fibrillation hypertension therefore in that subgroup of patient maybe in future left atrial appendage would be the preferred mode of treatment in atrial fibrillation so now from atrial fibrillation let us move on to heart failure now heart failure as we have been discussed discussing earlier before many times in uh, this medica cardio talk um, show 
that heart failure is progressively increasing in volume and we also recognized that anemia is an important component of heart failure. But if we treat anemia just by looking at the hemoglobin, that is not sufficient. People, are, people thought that, well, you look for the serum ferritin. So how to go about management of anemia? What are the metrics? What are the parameters which will be extremely helpful to guide us in treatment of heart failure, which may have some prognostic implication towards the outcome or long-standing outcome of heart failure patient. Again, my colleague Dr. Dilip Kumar, what are your views about iron and heart failure management? Yeah, I think this is uh, conclusively proven that uh, treating hyper, uh, you know, uh, iron deficiency is of extreme importance in heart failure patients, and gives gives us longer, uh, you know, uh, longevity and uh, you know the heart failure hospitalization is less, and so many benefits are there. But defining iron deficiency is very crucial here. So who, which are the patients on whom we are going to give intravenous therapy, iron therapy, and he is going to respond. So iron deficiency, especially in uh, conditions of heart failure, the ferritin, the role of ferritin is under, you know, cloud. Because heart failure is a state of chronic inflammation. Right. And chronic inflammation can lead to high ferritin level. In spite of patients having iron deficiency with a serum iron less than 13 and a transferrin saturation of less than 20%. So there was a very interesting uh, study which came up from England. Right. So from 2001 to 2019, they uh, evaluated the patients who had a heart failure with iron deficiency. So it was roughly around 4,000 patients. And they took this uh, definite guide, uh, heart failure, iron deficiency kind of criteria, which is a ferritin less than 100, which we, you know, still using ferritin as a marker for iron deficiency yes that's what we have yeah. been using earlier like for as, as, as a metric or, or some parameters like serum iron ferritin transferrin and hemoglobin so we have been working on that for years together and this group from from the united kingdom has actually worked seriously on that and realized that ferritin alone may not be sufficient of course the serum hemoglobin is not sufficient or not serum hemoglobin the, the whole blood the hemoglobin itself is not sufficient so how will you go about it which will you take ferritin because ferritin has fallacies what what are what are your take home message for the for 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 determining the guideline of uh, of treatment of anemia in patients of heart failure yeah. so this this study gave us some insight and they very clearly showed that uh, those patients who are transferring saturation of less than 20% and serum iron which is less than 15, they behave very, very clearly and very linear correlation with poor prognosis. Not ferritin. Not ferritin. Right. And ferritin was otherwise, like someone has a high ferritin but late transferring, less transfer. Th these patients were sicker patients and they responded with intravenous iron and they had a poor prognosis otherwise. Those patients with lesser, less ferritin and high transferring saturation, they behave well. Oh. So means serum iron less than 13 transferrin saturation is less than 20 percent they are basically the markers definite markers and maybe in future this the, 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 it may change and we may not uh, take into account ferritin ferritin and never hemoglobin so obviously as you uh, all understand that the serum ferritin may have fallacies especially in heart failure because many of these patients are chronic patients so chronic heart failure is an inflammatory condition where ferritin as a as an inflammatory marker may be falsely high so that cannot be the determinant to decide on iron therapy. On the contrary, serum ferritin less than 13 and transferrin saturation less than 20% perhaps would be the better marker or good marker in deciding iron therapy in patients of heart failure. Now taking another aspect of heart failure, especially the right heart failure, people are actually using the inter using intervention therapy for tricuspid valve, something like a mitral valve intervention like mitral clip. Here they are using tricuspid valve repair by triclip or tricuspid clip. There is a term called right ventricle RVPA coupling. Very interesting term. So let us be familiar with the term, with this term called RVPA coupling. What exactly you mean by this RVPA coupling or right ventricle pulmonary artery coupling? What exactly it means to our sort of viewers? Yeah, sir, this is uh, really very important to know this new entity and they want to streamline and uh, there should be some in index which can guide us that these patients basically will be getting benefited or this is going to correlate with mortality like which patient has a ph of how much and how the rv dysfunction will happen when it will happen so when to intervene and isolate it 
tricuspid valve pathology or right sided pathology is very difficult so there is no granularity there is no consensus here agreed yeah and and when it is too early to intervene a severe tricuspid leak or when it is too late when the patient has exhausted the rv is decompensated you don't get anything by even by intervention yeah. so now they have come up with a rv pa coupling where there is a tapsy we can it can tell us the rv function and that divided by pa systolic pressure which you determine by the tricuspid uh, regurgitation velocity. and jet velocity. velocity so the tapsp y uh, tapsp y uh, divided by psp gives us a value what is called rv pa coupling oh and what they found that there is a kind of a cut off of 0.317 and more than 0.317 the patient still they, they remain good and the chances are pro prognosis is not that bad but bef below that cut off the prognosis is really really worse so this is exactly an idea to make some kind of uh, streamline cut off criteria where we can think that this is going to correlate and when we need to intervene but i have to say i mean it sounds good to me but i have to say that the right ventricle itself has lot of fallacies for example we do not know how we calculate right ventricular ejection fraction we do not know the right ventricular diastolic the diastolic dysfunction how to calculate we do not know what happens to right ventricular function when there is a severe right ventricular hypertrophy for example in severe uh, pulmonary hypertension so so i'm sure there are some fallacies so what are your comments on uh, on those fallacies in yes, terms sir. of so rvpa coupling yeah there are different definite concerns that uh, it doesn't take into account the rv structure the thickness the uh, right atrial you know uh, morphology the, uh, the 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 dilatation so it's all, all a kind of physiological index so right but at the same time more and more trials will tell us that uh, how rvpa coupling index is going to guide us in future interventions sure but when you talk about the rvpa coupling are we just talking only about isolated tricuspid regurgitation or secondary to left sided heart disease yeah i think the recent trial which i'm uh, citing uh, they are uh, you know basically looking at the isolated tricuspid pathology and uh, their correlation with the uh, rvpa coupling but concept is very interesting of course i think it will be applicable in future other indexes also sure and it's the eco guided parameter so it will be easy to get those, those yes. data yeah. so as uh, as we all heard Uh, that is such a wonderful uh, session we talked about left atrial appendage closure versus no ax in management of atrial fibrillation where the la appendage closure device would be preferable especially in chronic kidney disease and in other conditions where there is a high bleeding risk and more chance of bleeding this is one in heart failure we also got educated today about the transferrin Uh, saturation less than 20% and some iron less than less than 13 ferritin has as as no correlation so sort of ferritin is progressively going out of the way in management of anemia in heart failure and finally the right ventricular pa coupling rp pa coupling in management of right sided heart failure to decide about the tri clip or tricuspid valve intervention thank you very much uh, to listen to us and uh, please tune yourself to medica cardio talks and see you soon in medica cardio talks 15 with new topics new technology and new understanding so that our thought can continue to grow and grow and our eagerness to learn medicine in 21st century thank you very much